check, check. Good morning, good morning. Let's settle down now. <laughs> Simmer down now. Simmer down. Adelaide Mills, please report to the principal's office. Morgan Mills, please report to the front of the sanctuary. Your child is missing. Hey, Therese. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I said good morning. Good morning. There we go. There Thanks we go. for joining us. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. So my family and I will be sharing some passages that reflect on the meaning of this day. First up is Scarlett. <laughs> With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heaven. Thank you. As the Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Romans, as well as the church of Ephesus, once God's plan was a mystery, hidden from our sight. Now God has disclosed what he kept secret for so very long. He has brought it out into the full light. In the brighter light on this fourth Sunday of Advent, may we see more clearly the glory of God in Christ the Messiah and proclaim the steadfast love of our Lord. Let your light shine just as he is the true light of the world who came to us over 2,000 years ago in a town called Bethlehem. Now a passage from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave his power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He, we have beheld his glory, glory as the only Son from the Father. Thank you. This festival of lights, or Hanukkah season, look upon him, the one who was sent for you, me, and for those who are still far off. For his light is able to reach us all. Amen. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to sing about uh, Jesus and the long-awaited King. If you guys want to stand, we're going to worship the Lord together. Amen. Peace on earth 
and mercy mild, God and sinners reconcile. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. the son of the king singing glory to god and peace on the earth sing it out now the song of the king the heaven-born prince of peace hail the son of righteousness Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that men no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them Son of the King, singing glory to God and peace on the earth. Sing it out now, the song of the King. And the angels they sing, and the heavens they ring. Won't you raise up your voice? You're the Son of the King, singing glory to God and peace on the earth. Sing it out now, the song of the King. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 Amen. Mm. And we can't hold that in, can we? Go tell it on the mountain.
Tell them. Amen. You guys can be seated.
with me now be with me now breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of heaven breath of heaven lighten my darkness pour over me your holiness for you are holy breath of heaven do you wonder as i watch my face if a wiser one should have had my place but i offer all i am for you strong help me be help me breath of heaven hold me together be forever near me breath of Breath of heaven, breath of heaven, breath of
Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to light the lights upon them. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who has performed miracles for our ancestors in those days at this time. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who has kept us alive, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this season. Let's see how edu educated you guys are here. Um, first, somebody gave me a note that the Cheryl, Sue Ellen, and Sarah Marks are taking pictures after. For any of you that want your picture taken for the in-house directory, this won't go out anywhere. Um, mostly for Mike, who's coming in, needs to know your faces and names. Or if you just want to send one in, uh, to Maggie, it's up to you. But or you can just get them taken right here. Bam, bam, bam. All right. So I, <coughs> Hanukkah tonight. Actually, tonight is when Hanukkah begins, and they light the first candle uh, of Hanukkah. Um, it's nice to go ahead and light them all because you know next week actually will be the end of Hanukkah, Christmas. So. Um, We'll do the last prayers next week for uh, on Christmas Day. The uh, difference. What's the difference between this one and this one? Huh? What? Everything. What's the difference between this candle stick and this candle stick? Other than they're all lighted and that's only got one candle there. Uh, but what's the difference in them? Yes, thank you. One has nine holes for candles. One only has seven. Why? Oh, yes, eight nights to celebrate. What? The oil burning, which was a what? Miracle, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, what's significant then about the seven branch candlestick? Yeah, they put it up here and ruined it. <laughs> Isaiah 11. That's that. There you go. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Isaiah 11. Uh, if you, if you read that, it talks about the sevenfold spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of... Well, it should be counsel and might, knowledge and understanding, wisdom. Good grief. All right. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord is the way it should be. And that's a little bit off, so whatever. That must came off of, uh, was that a Google? Thing? <laughs> Don't trust Google. 
So, why is it important? How many, yeah, I mean, most of you grew up, you never, you heard of Hanukkah, it was just some word that you heard about, and you saw the candlesticks maybe, and, and um, well, there you go, he was Messianic Jewish, so you had a, a, a taste of what Hanukkah was about. But well, most of you probably grew up never lighting the candles or even thinking about it. Why, why, why would it be important for us as believers to celebrate Hanukkah? Huh? Jesus was Jewish. Do you think Jesus celebrated Hanukkah? You do? Huh? Of course he did. It was, see, as a matter of fact, the only place it really brings that out is in John 10 verse 22 this time came to observe the winter feast of renewal in Jerusalem Jesus walked into the temple area under Solomon's covered walkway and then the Jewish leaders encircled him and basically that this it's the the feast of renewal feast of dedication or feast of lights same thing it was called the Feast of Lights. Hanukkah is a, a name that was given to it later. As a, it means dedication. Nothing wrong with it. All of that works. But it, it would be something that Jesus came to Jerusalem specifically to celebrate. Why, was, why would for us that be so important? Now, granted, you're not Catholic, so you probably aren't reading First and Second Maccabees, but pick, up a, pick it up. Read it. It's a fantastic story. It wasn't put into the Jewish canon, um, but it's, it's very historical and prized. It just didn't fit the canon requirements. Okay? So, why would the Maccabees story and the capturing of the temple and the, the miracle of the lights, why would that be important for us? Oh, you've made it too easy on everybody. <laughs> Good. You couldn't hear? Nobody out there could hear? What, what other reasons would we have? I need to remember we're on camera. What other reasons would we have for celebrating this time? The Holy Spirit. It's like the oil was presented by the Holy Spirit, none other. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's always been indwelling around us, but we couldn't we can at times, yeah. and that's how it means. It's like he translated then as a promise that he would hold them together. That promise came to pass and fully you're, with Jesus. You're jumping way ahead. Doggone you. Stop it. <laughs> no more. You're not allowed. So, but why celebrate, why celebrate Hanukkah? Any, huh? To remember. To remember. Thank you. To remember what? Everything Heather said. Huh? <laughs> What? To have faithfulness to hold us, to preserve us. All of those things, right? God's faithfulness, God's love for all those things are reasons to celebrate. But what what was important, and it's what Heather did when she said what she did, was if the Maccabees hadn't miraculously done it, was the, it was the uh, Syrian Greek world. Um, Antiochus, Epiphanes, Epiphany, whatever his name was anyway, was ruler, wanted to get rid of everything Jewish, everything, any other culture other than Greek, because he thought Greek culture was the culture. They, circumcision was, was uh, um, banned. It was against the law. You could be horribly tortured and killed if you did, get, if you did circumcise your child. Um, I mean, it was atrocious, the kinds of things that were done to those that tried to worship in any way Jewish. And they defiled the temple, totally defiled it. And, and so, they, however, there was always this remnant. A lot, a lot of the Jews at that time just kind of caved in and gave in to it and said, well, whatever. 
But the true believer is the one who really loved God and wanted to remain righteous and walk in righteousness, were always there and didn't care if they were going to get killed or not. Um, they refused. And among of those were the Maccabees. There were five brothers. And they, they said, no way. And they rose up against... It's a good story. I'm making it short. They rose up against the, the rulers of that time and miraculously, as a small group who were outnumbered, terribly outnumbered, anyway, conquered, went back in there, restored the temple. When they restored the temple, they went in and they found that there was only enough oil to, to burn in this this seven branch candlestick there was only enough to burn in it for one day enough oil but they put it in and it burned how long okay <clears throat> miraculously why why is that important why is it that, that, that they only had enough oil couldn't they just go out and find some oil somewhere and put it in why not It had to be ceremoniously prepared as directed, and that took how long? Huh? It took eight days for it to be to go through the ceremony of that. So there's your there's your miraculous part of the whole of the whole lighting of the candles. Get yourself a menorah and light them every day and say the prayers. They're fantastic prayers. You you heard them. Um, they're really good. Yeah. Hold on just a minute. We're, well, it, it's, it's not because of everybody. It's because of the people out there and getting mad at me. Um, I learned last year that another reason for the eight days was it, it took about maybe three to four days to get to the um, olive farm or, and then to get back and then prepare it. So that's and to prepare it. So that's another. It was the exact amount of days to get there and come back. And good. Prepare. Good. Thank you. Someone else? Good information. All right. So Hanukkah is, is, is one day when we think about it. And why celebrate Christmas? Christmas is nowhere in the Bible as a celebration. Right? Or is it? Why celebrate Christmas? There are a lot of, quote, believers out there who think it's an anathema to put up a Christmas tree and celebrate Christmas. They're out there. Hmm? Who outlawed it? All right, the Puritans outlawed it. But why? Why would you outlaw it? Now, a lot of people took the Ezekiel passage about trees being decorated and all, as some, an idol that you worship. How many of you go into your homes and worship your Christmas tree? Right? And you may sit there and go, wow, it's beautiful and pretty and wonderful, but you all know that it's going to wither and die and you're going to have to throw it out or, or it's a, a fake tree and you're going to just fold it up and put it away in the attic. Well, there goes your idol. I, I mean, to me... To me, one of the things um, that, 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 to me, that believers need to capture more than anything else is the mind, because they don't think. We don't think a lot of times. A lot of times, we just carte blanche accept. God gave you a brain for you to think. So when you, somebody comes up to you and says, Christmas is, is anathema, and now you say, no, it's not, would you have a real reason why it's not for you? Is there something that you could, could give them to say, I celebrate it because, of course, we talk about the birth of, of the Messiah, all of that kind of stuff. We talk about all of that. That's the main reason we celebrate Christmas, to remember, to remember what? 
God's faithfulness. What else? I'm just going to repeat what they say, folks. He is with us. He is with us. Emmanuel. He came. He came to be with us physically. Emmanuel, yes. The filling, fulfilling the promise of prophecy, right? Oh, there's a lot to think about in that context. Now, so what is the big word? What is the big important word we're using here? It's, in, it's all through the Bible. And I think it's so important because one of the, what, what makes this word so important is, and if I say the opposite, you'll know what word I'm talking about. <laughs> but this word is so important because it, it, it helps us to bring to life what God has done in us. So what word is that? Remember. Remember. Right? Remember. So we have symbols. Um, the, the, the menorah reminds us of the, of the miraculous things that were done as a result of the Maccabees. That they preserved the temple. Jesus had a temple to go in. There was a, a, a Hebrew nation that, that he could come out of, the tribe of Judah. All of those things were part of what you would remember, right? And the seven branch candlestick. What was so, what does it do when, it, when, when you look at it? Well, it brings to me the sevenfold spirit of God, but it was always burned in the holy place in the temple before you went into the Holy of Holies. It was always represented of light, as God being the light, Jesus is the light. It was always representative of, of um, the Holy Spirit, the seven branch candlestick. And so a lot of times praying, praying for people, I just say, Lord, may the Spirit of God rest upon them, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. It's a powerful prayer. But it takes that symbol to kind of cause you to remember that. So why would it be important? What, why is it so important? Why, why bother with Christmas and even remember it? Why... Why bother with Hanukkah? Why bother with any of these kinds of things to remember? Because we're very forgetful. At least we Woo-hoo. <laughs> big, we big good word, because we forget, yes. right? Yes. And, and if we forget, then what happens? We lose. We lose something. That was what was interesting about the, the whole Jewish tradition is they, they, you did not lose those remembrances. Now, you got to understand something. It was very normal to win a battle and do what? Celebrate. Celebrate. But what did they do? They piled rocks on top of each other, and they, they said this was because God gave us the victory over this, and it was something to remember. When they crossed the, when they crossed the, uh, the uh, Jordan River and came into the Promised Land, they took 12 stones and piled them up to do what? To remember how God had brought them into the promise. There was a constant thing that when you went by those, you remembered what? You remembered the acts of God. The mighty acts of God. Now, here's another good reason. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12, Remember his marvelous works. Actually, let's start with the 11. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. How? Remember. That's the next word. Seek the Lord and seek his face continually. How? Remember his marvelous works that he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Remember these things. Remember. We remember his marvelous works. Well, yeah, all right, we can remember the birth, the coming of the Messiah, 
Remember that he came as a baby. He, was, he came as uh, uh, God made himself vulnerable. He cried. He needed his diapers changed. Mary had to feed him. Whatever his needs were, they responded to him like any other baby. Grew up. And we don't know much from 12 on. And only brief moments that we've known. And then he, he was there for three years with his ministry. But we re remember this because it was such a powerful moment. God made it a powerful moment. There were the shepherds who came and sang. It was a powerful moment in history. It was a powerful moment because kings came and worshipped when he was two years old, worshipped him. All the way. They, they marched for what? Two years to come and worship him, the newborn king. And so we remember this. And you know the sad reality? My, my, my wife teaches piano. And at this time of year, she likes them to do a lot of Christmas stuff, you know, carols and everything. And a lot of her students have no clue what any of it means. It all it means to them is a tree and, and gifts that they exchange. They have no clue about anything, Jesus. It's all Santa Claus and trees, and that's it, if they even do that. But it, 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 it has no meaning to them. It's amazing how a culture is beginning to come up that is forgetting and how easy it is that we don't impart to our own children things that they need that would help them remember. During communist days in Romania, I know, Every Christmas day for 24 hours, they were allowed to march through the streets and sing Christmas carols at the top of their lungs wow. Wow. and go around to homes and, 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 and carol homes. All night long they did this because it was against the law any other time. You could be thrown in prison, tortured, whatever, just for any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, they were churches, but the pastors were always getting, getting anyway, it, that's a whole other story, but Christmas was huge. Can you imagine that? For 24 hours, they came and they sang and they worshipped. There must be something there. And they were too poor, most of them were too poor to celebrate big giving of gifts and all that kind of stuff or even afford a tree if they had them and if you ever look at the trees over there in uh, in Romania they, they don't have much as far as quote Christmas trees a lot most of them look like Charlie Brown trees um, a little better maybe a little more full but uh, and they become more popular as people have had money and stuff to be able to buy them but for them, it was a joyous and celebratory time of remembering that day. Hanukkah is a day we remember. Why? Because it's his marvelous works. It was a marvelous works of God that he did that led up to, quote, what's the next marvelous move of God? Christmas. If you think about it. The next move and big move of God was, was the Messiah being born. Then, of course, there was John the Baptist in, involved in all that. There was all kinds of, I mean, Jesus alone being born of a virgin was, was quite a, a, a miracle in itself. Why do we personally remember and what do we do in our own lives that keep us in a place of seeking his face and recognizing that this God is such a loving and kind God 
and not allowing stuff to come in that says otherwise. The attributes of God, every one of them are positive. None of them are negative. There's not one attribute of God that says he was this bad guy or mean or whatever. They're all about righteousness and love and shalom and, and healing, all of them when they're connected with God's name, 200 and some odd names of God. And they're all rich and positive. And if you think about Psalm um, 139, where it says, All my thoughts to you are precious. They outnumber the grains of sand. You ought to take that scripture and make it your Ebenezer. Ebenezer was what? A place of remembrance uh, where they set up. A place of remembrance. Make it your place of remembrance to remember when you're sitting there and you're feeling all of the world on your life and shoulders and thinking how wretched maybe you are or whatever. Just stop for a minute and realize what are the thoughts of God to me? What are His thoughts to me? They're precious. Isn't it interesting that we do a whole blessings course? Maybe we ought to do a curse course. <laughs> well, the sad reality is, if you think about it, any, anything other than something precious coming from God's mouth would be a curse. Why would he want us to learn blessing and to learn to bless? Because that's what he does. That's his heart. His heart is to bless and curse not. Yet it ekes in there. Where does it come from? Satan comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And they're lies that we believe somehow, somewhere. So for our own world, and I have to do it because I forget I forget what God took me through. And when I do that, guess what, I, guess what happens? When I forget what God has brought me through and what God has brought me into, what do I do? What happens? Huh? Well, you can be led astray, but you also can become depressed and discouraged because you don't see something happening, right? And you've forgotten what He's done already for you. you you're... You've got to go back and remember all of those altars that you set up, good altars, that you set up, altars of remembrance. Not that you worship at, but altars of remembrance. Why? I remember when, when God came to me, I was not looking for God, had no desire for God. There was no thoughts of God in my life whatsoever. I was strung out for days on drugs, sitting there, and all of a sudden, short story, waves and waves of God's love poured through me. I didn't know what they were at the time. I thought it was the drugs. Wow. But I, had, I realized I had never used anything this intense before, and it had a total different feeling than drugs did. And I'd used everything, up my arms, up my nose, wherever you want to put them. And, and there were just waves and waves and waves of love flowing in and through me. You know what? I went back there the other day and just began to think about that and think about that moment and the same waves begin to pour through me. Why? Because it's the ways of God. God takes us through something and it's His ways that He allows us to return to. It's called the ways of God. And his desire is that we do, because then what do you do? I'm remembering this moment. Well, guess what? The Spirit of God doesn't live in time and space, ultimately. For God, there's no such a thing as a beginning and end or time and space or whatever. It's hard for us to conceive. God bees. His name means he, he just bees. He exists. He's there. And he sees what's before and behind and in the middle, everything. So it makes sense to me that remembrance 
that's so important about it is what it brings back to us that encourages us, that strengthens us, and that makes us seek his face and worship him, no matter how difficult things may be and come to be. Father, we thank you for this table of remembrance that we are about to, to eat from. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for the, the bread and the wine that remind us of your body broken and your blood that was shed that cleanses us from all sin, past, present, and future. Father, we thank you for all the amazing and wonderful acts, marvelous acts, that you have done in each of our lives. And Holy Spirit, would you, in your glorious power, bring them to remembrance during this season? And let us remember how powerfully you have worked in our lives, even in times when we didn't think you were. Bless the bread and the wine and us gathered here. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. take the bread, you dip it. One is, uh, the big cup is, is juice, the one, this one is wine, and if you have a gluten problem, then the bread is gluten free. So, come. Enjoy the feast.
Jesus be the center of my life.
you guys can be seated. Um, the dance team is going to perform for us, so enjoy. Yeah. 
Glory to his name, glory in the highest, glory to his name. Not one promise from God is empty of power. Nothing is impossible with God. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Go and be blessed.